we've all seen people that seem to be fundamentally marked by their experiences, if their experiences are profoundly negative. Um, say somebody who had gone through the Vietnam War and became misanthropic, socially withdrawn, addicted, um, riddled with anxieties, terrors uh, that they can't face. Perhaps they're extremely embittered, very angry, etc., etc. You could apply that sort of scenario to anybody who has been fundamentally, as we might say, broken by extreme circumstances, terrible suffering. Um, if I want to say truly empathize with such a person, in your opinion, do you think it is necessary for me to validate the less, what would you call it, less virtuous aspects of their reaction to their, to their sufferings? Say we take our Vietnam vet. He hates the world. He hates everybody. He is prone to extreme anxiety. Um, this sort of thing. Can't control his rage, can't control his hatred, whatever. In order for me to truly empathize with that person, do I have to validate all of that? Do I have to validate that person's anger, that person's extreme anxiety, that person's terror even, um, that person's hate? Do I have to actually say yes this is legitimate if I want to truly empathize with that person. I would say at a certain point, empathizing with someone may actually be not in their best interest. I guess the classic case of that is what has come down to us in the vernacular as enabling, right? Enabling is when you make excuses for someone else's, I guess what we would call bad behavior. Um, <clears throat> I'm having an interesting exchange in the co uh, comment section with someone named Fear is a Scary Game, and we seem to be arguing this point. Um, not sure if it's going to go anywhere, but it kind of lies at the heart of how we see suffering, right? How we see um, what I might call the dark side where you've been pushed to the point where hatred seems to be a, a rational and reasonable uh, feeling to have, where extreme terror and completely letting go to the negative passions might be an understandable, even um, acceptable way to behave. To me, that is enabling. The person has seen things which, or has experienced things which are horrible. Um, but when you tell them that they're right to feel angry, they're right to feel hateful, they're right to wake up in the middle of the night screaming, bathe, bathe in a cold sweat, that what they're doing is actually the proper response, uh, I would say it's the same thing as handing a bottle of whiskey to somebody who is desperately trying to give up booze, or who says, I drink because life has given me no other option to deal with the terrible pain that I'm suffering. Um, if you tell people that, yes, your reaction to what you've been through is so bad that your continued indulgent, indulgence in what I would call vices, I think hate is a vice, um, Extreme anxiety is a vice, um, this sort of thing. You're telling them that, yes, um, yes, you should keep going the way you're going. You should keep drinking that whiskey. Uh, I understand why you drink that whiskey, and it's the problems that you have experienced are too big for you, so load your veins again or drink another bottle of whiskey. Because I understand. It's pretty bad, right? Um, that's the way I would characterize that kind of thinking. The only way to empathize with somebody is to return them, or you have to want to return them to a state of health. 
You can't say, I understand why you're that way, and so just keep on going the way that you're going. Even though the addict, I guess, will say, who the hell do you think you are to give me advice? Try, you know, walking a mile in my shoes. Do you want to become whole again or not? It's that simple, isn't it?